What's up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're gonna talk about, hold on, Mitch told me to hold the camera like this and I don't wanna do this. Mitch, can you take the camera? Okay, this is, this is much better, now I've got both hands free. I don't know what to do with my hands, name that movie. Anyway, in this video we're gonna talk about why you need to be doing strength training and specifically why cardio, even though it's amazing and you should be doing it, it's not enough. You can't just do cardio, eliminate strength training, or do minimal strength training, and expect to get the best results either for your overall health, or for your performance, or for injury prevention, or any of that. So that's what this video is about. I hope you like it. Smash the thumbs up button, subscribe if you don't already. Let's get into Jiu Jitsu. All right, we're back. Just finished jujitsu, got back to the apartment. We're gonna do the video now. And as a quick reminder, this video is specifically about why you need to be doing strength training. So if you're new to the channel and you just found this video, you found my channel, welcome. I'm super excited to have you. This video is gonna be about why you need to be doing strength training, especially if you aren't doing any now. If you are not new to the channel, you know who I am, you know why you should be doing strength training, but maybe you have a friend or a family member or a colleague or someone who is mainly or only doing cardio and not doing strength, probably wanna send them this video because my goal is to try and convince people that they need to be doing more strength training. And it's for everyone. Frankly, it, it, more women need it than men. Um, generally speaking, men tend to gravitate towards strength training and then they avoid cardio. So I actually think more men need to do more cardio and also continue strength training and more women need to continue doing some cardio but also add strength training. So if you have a friend or a family member or a loved one who is not doing strength training but you're trying to convince them to, this is the video to send to them, okay? Now, I'm obviously looking at my phone because I have a lot of notes on here for this video. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the benefits of cardio very, very briefly. I have tons of videos and podcasts discussing that, but I just wanna say, many people will see this video and say, oh my God, so he's saying not to do cardio. No, motherfucker, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't do cardio. I'm saying that if all you're doing is cardio, you need to add strength training. Strength training is, is not something to skip or to gloss over or to undervalue, and we're gonna get into all of that. But Cardio is also super important. It's unbelievably important for your health, your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, all of that. So please continue doing cardio. I see a lot of people getting sick. I mean, we can actually look at, at blood pressure across populations, uh, especially among men, uh, among men. But generally speaking, we're seeing blood pressure get higher and higher and higher at a younger age. We're seeing people needing to take blood pressure medication at a younger age. And there could be many reasons for this, but one of them is because people are far less active and not getting enough cardio in. So I want to make sure you understand, I'm not saying don't do cardio, only do strength. I'm saying if you're only doing cardio, you also need to add strength because it is imperative for your health and for your performance, for injury prevention and living a longer life. So with that being said, let's get into the next section, which is, um, but, Cardio shouldn't be all you do. You need to do strength for many, many reasons. And I want to start with talking about why many people only do cardio. Okay, I'm just gonna go through a couple of these reasons. Number one is many people, especially women, but actually a lot of men struggle with this as well. They don't wanna do weightlifting. They only do cardio because they don't wanna get bulky. And I know this is very common for women to say, and a lot of women might think that men don't say this, but as a coach, I've worked with many men who are worried about getting too bulky. And they'll say things like, oh yeah, I don't wanna look like Arnold. And you know, women will say that as well. And Arnold has a very famous saying or a phrase, cause people would come up to him and say, hey, I wanna build muscle, but I don't wanna look like you. And Arnold would look back and be like, trust me, you're never gonna look like me. Basically saying like, you're never gonna put in the work or, or put in the effort or the time or any of that to, to look like I look. It's very difficult to, to build that amount of muscle mass. But whether you're a man or a woman and you're struggling with the idea of lifting weights because you don't want to get bulky, please, for the love of God, eliminate that from your justifications or excuses. You're not gonna get too bulky. You're not gonna get too big. There are some people in the, in the fitness world who say it's impossible for women to get big and bulky. It's not impossible at all. Like women can do it and many women want to do it, but it is 
unbelievably difficult to get very big and very bulky, especially for women, but even for men. I mean, I'm sure every single person watching this has at least one friend who is a guy who really struggles to gain weight. No matter how much he eats, no matter how much he lifts, it's very difficult for him to put on muscle mass. And this is including like, he's got healthy testosterone levels, he's a healthy person, he gets enough sleep, manages stress well. Building a lot of muscle mass is unbelievably difficult, period. The reason a lot of people, men and women, might get very, very bulky is whether they're telling you or not, a lot of them are taking anabolic steroids and using things that you're not going to be, you're not going to be exposed to and you don't want to put in your body. So whether you're taking protein powder or eating a lot of chicken and then lifting weights, like it's not going to make you bulky, I promise. And the benefits of strength training are so overwhelmingly important that to not do it for a fear of getting bulky is going to shortchange you and could severely hurt your life. One of the best quotes that I've ever heard used, I believe this came from Spencer Nadolsky, uh, Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, is, is getting worried that you're going to get bulky from lifting weights is like being worried that you're gonna turn into a NASCAR driver because you're driving to the grocery store. Just because you're driving doesn't mean you're all of a sudden gonna turn into a NASCAR driver, just in the same way that just because you're lifting heavier weights and strength training doesn't mean you're gonna turn into a bodybuilder. It's just not how it works. It's an unfounded fear, and I want to remove that from your worries, okay? So another reason that people will mainly do cardio and avoid strength training is because they're intimidated. They're intimidated to go into the gym. They're intimidated to go in. And a lot of people, especially women, but also men too, they look in the strength training area and they see these big jack dudes and they get worried. Then, are these people going to judge me? Are these people going to fight me? Are these people going to intimidate me or, or try and push me out of the gym? And this is a valid fear. I'm not gonna say it's invalid because I've seen awful videos online of some people being complete, utter assholes and being dicks and deliberately intimidating people. So I'm not gonna say it's an unfounded fear, but what I do want you to know is I've been in gyms since I was, I was a teenager, a young, young, young teenager. I've been doing this for many, many years, almost 20 years now. And I've worked with literally thousands of clients all over the world. And I've never worked with anyone, whether it's, it's myself or any client who's had an experience like this personally. There are some, and unfortunately, some instances like this, they go viral on, on the internet, and then we think that it's happening to everybody. It's not. I'm telling you from, from years and years and years of experience working with thousands of people all over the world, the vast majority of people in the gym are very nice. They're very welcoming. It is important to keep in mind that a lot of the people in the gym, regardless of how big or jacked or experienced they seem, they're also insecure. And so it's very easy to, to look at someone else and think, oh my God, they're judging me. Oh my God, why is that person looking at me? What are they thinking? But at the same time, you're looking at them and they might be thinking the exact same thing about you. Why are they looking at me? Are they judging me? What's going on? So just keep in mind, it's okay for you to feel intimidated. It's not okay to let that feeling of intimidation prevent you from getting in the gym and lifting weights. And worst comes to worst, let's say someone is being a dick. Let's say you are the small percentage of individuals who ends up running into someone who's an asshole and wants you out of there. The worst case scenario is you can tell them to fuck off and you're gonna keep lifting, in which case you're gonna be proud of yourself for standing your ground. Finding another gym is always an option, although I don't really encourage that. I think you have a right to be there just like anybody else. So worst comes to worst, you can either tell them to fuck off, you can get the gym staff and let them know what's going on, and you keep doing what you know is right and best for you because you need to do that to live your longest, healthiest, happiest, strongest life, okay? Now, another reason people will struggle in the gym uh, is because, or to, to go to the strength training section, is because they don't know what to do. And I'm gonna talk about that later in this video. I'm gonna give you some, some fundamental basic ideas to make sure your strength workouts are effective. But not knowing what to do is, honestly, it's, it's a pretty easy remedy. It's not, it's not going to take a very brief period of time, like it's gonna put, it's gonna take time and effort for you, but it's relatively easy nowadays. It's easier now than it has ever been in history to learn how to train properly. And I have a program if you wanna join that, but if you don't, I'm gonna give you free information on how to do that anyway. But please don't let a lack of knowledge prevent you from getting in there and trying and learning. Worst comes to worst, you can find someone's YouTube channel, like you're watching right now, and figure out very simple ways to make your strength training effective. And that's actually the cool part about strength training. I see a lot of people online talking about like doing these crazy exercises and balancing on, on BOSU balls and doing like all this crazy shit that is quite frankly, it's more dangerous than it is effective. Effective strength training is very simple. 
It's very basic. It's not dangerous. In fact, it's going to be better for you. It's gonna prevent injury over the long term. And effective strength training, it doesn't take much time and it's not very complex. If it seems outrageously complex, I would question the person that you're learning from and maybe try and go to find someone else who can break it down a little bit more simply, like myself. Anyway, the another reason that uh, people will only do cardio and avoid strength training is because, and this is I think one of the, the biggest and if not the most important, is because they don't understand the depths of how much strength training will positively impact their life. And, and this is what I'm, we're gonna go into next. We're gonna talk about a bunch of the benefits of strength training, because again, my goal here is to convince you to start strength training. My goal here is to convince you to start lifting weights and lifting heavy weights and getting stronger. And most people, I think when they hear strength training, the image that gets conjured up in their head is bodybuilder. Huge bodybuilder on stage, steroids, not mobile enough, walking like this, meathead, often the image that they have conjured in their head because of movies and, and cliches is like stupid meathead, they don't know what they're talking about, like the lunk alarm type thing, right? Um, I, that's what we're gonna dive into right now because the countless ways that strength training positively impacts your life are, are remarkable. It's probably gonna take your breath away and if I could just get one person to decide, you know what, I'm now ready to start strength training because I didn't know those benefits and those benefits are very clearly important to me, then this video will have been worth it. Pause one second, Jordan from the future here to remind you if you are not on my email list, you are missing out. I rarely email, but when I do email, it's usually good news like a sale in the inner circle or I'm giving away free months in the inner circle. There are many reasons to be on it, but if you're not on it yet, you're missing out. So click the link in the description, join my email list. If you don't like it, cool, unsubscribe but make sure you're there because there are big things coming and I don't want you to miss out. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so I have a very big list of benefits of strength training. Some of them are a little bit tongue in cheek and funny, but they're all very serious and like they're, they're real. So I'm gonna sort of just rattle them off now and spend more time on some than others. But the very first one, and I think this is arguably the most important benefit of strength training and why you need to be lifting, is because you will never struggle to open a pickle jar ever again. This is very important. I mean, I know many people who they're in the kitchen and they're like, oh, they can't open it and they're looking for, se for some help, they're looking for a tool. My wife, she strength trains several times a week, every single week, she did it throughout her pregnancy and everything. She never struggles, she never needs my help because she's as strong as fuck. You never want to have to be stuck, not able to open a pickle jar. So if you're ever worried about like, and actually, you know what, it's sort of tongue in cheek and funny, but also as you get older and as you lose strength naturally, which is often what just happens over time, what if like you need to open a pickle jar and there's no one there? Or you need to open any type of a jar or any type of something. You need to open something and you literally don't have the strength to open it. This is a real problem. Whether it's a pickle jar or something else, you need to have the grip strength. And interestingly, if you look at the research around life expectancy, one of the greatest predictors of life expectancy is grip strength which is pretty crazy, right? So one of the, one of the things that researchers will use as a, as a measure to test someone's life expectancy is how strong their grip is. And you might think, well, why is that? Well, how many things do you need to be able to do with a strong grip, whether it's opening up a door, whether it's picking something up, there are so many things that, whether it's pulling yourself up, if God forbid you fall, we'll talk about that later. There are so many reasons why you need to have a strong grip. And as you get older, it is very, very likely, not very, very, not, not even just likely, it is a fact that unfortunately part of getting older is losing strength, which is why when you're younger, and by younger I mean like it could be 60, 70, 80 years old, there's ne it's never too old to get in the gym and start strength training, but as you keep aging, you're going to lose strength, so you want to make sure that your grip is staying strong, which is very, very important, and there are so many ways to help increase your grip strength that are just part of a normal strength training program. You don't need to do these stupid little wrist curls and shit like that. Just just lifting in, uh, intentionally and intelligently will improve your grip strength overall. So never gonna struggle with opening a pickle jar again. Uh, picking up heavy bags, whether it's luggage or groceries, this is another thing. I mean, if, if you struggle with that, if you struggle with picking up heavy bags, if you're going to the airport and you're worried about being able to pick up your luggage, and, and not even just about being able to pick it up. Like for example, I just got back from, I was in Ohio yesterday and I had a big bag of luggage. And for me, being able to take that luggage out, not just being capable of doing it, but without the fear of hurting my back while doing it, 
is a huge advantage. Same thing with my daughter, right? My daughter, she, as of this recording, she's six and a half months old. Every time I take, I pick her up in her car seat to put it into the, into the car, that shit is heavy. It's heavy enough without her, never mind with her in it. And it's a little bit of an awkward maneuver, right? It's not just very simple, like I open the door, but the door doesn't fully open all the way just because maybe there's a car parked next to us or whatever it is. So I've got to sort of maneuver in there in this very awkward position to put my daughter inside of the car seat. And I'm never worried about hurting my back because I know I've trained myself to handle these loads and not just these loads, but these awkward loads, these awkward positions. Could you imagine, God forbid, holding your child, trying to get them into the car seat and then you feel your back go, God forbid what happens to your child, but then to you as well. And then what are you gonna be able to drive home safely? All of these things. Strength training, one of the most important things that it does for you is it prevents injury. And in the case of this specific note is it will allow you to lift heavy things, not just the capability of lifting them, but without the fear of hurting yourself as a result of lifting them. So another reason that, that strength training is so important and another major benefit of it, and I think as I just became a father, this is probably the, one of the ones that is just top of mind for me right now is being able to play with your kids. And, and I think a lot of people, when they think about playing with their kids, they think about the endurance and the capacity, which is why they'll often go for cardio, right? Which is really, really important. But anyone who has kids or multiple kids, they're gonna tell you like, it's not just about lasting longer and having enough endurance. Like you need strength in order to do it. I'll give you an example. I remember growing up, uh, one of the fathers uh, who, who helped with the baseball team. He never strength trained, he spoke about it a lot, and he was always playing catch with us, playing catch with us with, with, uh, with the baseball, and eventually he had to stop because of rotator cuff issues. And I always go back, and I'm not saying that this would have prevented it, like I don't know, I don't know the situation, but one of the easiest ways to prevent a rotator cuff issue is just simple, basic strength training. That's it doing good dumbbell rows, doing some over, overhead, some vertical pulling, lat pull downs, chin ups, anything like that. Even some basic external rotation work to keep your rotator cuff strong. These are the types of things that actually make a huge difference and potentially could have allowed this coach to play with the kids more and, and play catch with them more, which I know would have been more fun for him and it definitely would have been more fun for us. It's, uh, it's These are the things that if you wanna play catch with your kids or pick your kids up, I'll give you another example. The, my first ever client, I was interning at a gym when I was 16 years old. My first ever client, his name was Fred, 68 years old. And I sat down with him and I said, Fred, what are your goals? And it floored me. This is my first ever one-on-one -on -one coaching client ever. He, he said, uh, I want to be able to pick up my grandson without hurting my shoulders because he had rotator cuff issues. And actually, this is the story. This is the, this is the moment that I knew I wanted to be a coach. I knew that I wanted to be a coach because for the first time in my life, again, I was 16, I wasn't, I wasn't very old. Um, I wasn't old at all, <laughs> I was a baby, but I realized for the first time in my life that I cared more about me helping Fred achieve his goals than me achieving my goals. That's how I knew, I was like, oh, this is what I wanna do. Because when Fred told me that he wanted to be able to just pick his grandson up without hurting his shoulders, I was like, this is it. Like, I, I care more about helping Fred do that than I do about getting whatever it is that I want. And that's how I knew I wanted to be a coach. Not because I liked working out, not because I liked being in the gym, which I do, but because immediately, like, I got a fire in my soul that said, I need to help Fred do that, which he did. And I'm like, what a blessing, and it's amazing. But how did I help Fred do that? Well, first and foremost, I started studying everything about the shoulder joint, about the rotator cuff, about the glenohumeral joint, about how where everything attaches and which exercises he needs to do in order to strengthen that to prevent injury along the way. But I didn't once put him on an elliptical, put him on, put him on a treadmill. Uh, I didn't have him do any, any spinning or cycling, any of that. Not that it's bad, it would be great for his heart health and, I, and he could be doing that on the side, but when it came to his goal of picking his grandson up without hurting his shoulders, that came down to strength training. That came down to getting stronger. And I'm actually really glad I thought about this story because again, going back to the image that a lot of people have in their mind when they hear strength training, bodybuilder, meathead, lunk. It's like, no, strength training equals picking your grandkids up without hurting yourself. Strength training equals getting up off the toilet without falling down and hurting yourself. Strength training equals being able to open up the pickle jar without needing help from somebody else. Strength training equals being able to pick yourself up after you fall. Strength training equals falling without letting your bones break because you've built up enough bone density so that you're not gonna be at risk anymore. Strength training equals health. That's what it equals. Strength training doesn't equal this. It can lead to that, 
if you're using anabolic steroids and doing insane amounts of it and, and tremendous amounts of volume and intensity. But basic, simple, effective strength training equals longer, healthier, happier life, period, end of story. Now, uh, I think I just said a bunch of the other benefits of strength training, but we're gonna keep going through them. Um, something that I think goes over, that goes overlooked is the mental component of all of this, the psychological component and how that affects your, uh, your confidence over time. And, and no one would say that too much confidence is a bad thing, right? Being too cocky can be a bad thing, but confidence and cockiness are not the same thing. And one of my favorite quotes ever is that no one ever complained about being too strong, ever. And again, remember strength is not the same thing as mass. Getting bigger muscles is not the same thing as making your muscles stronger. You can get stronger without needing to get bigger. For example, with Fred. With Fred, it was nothing about getting him bigger. It was about making his muscles stronger. And we did that without making his muscles bigger. And I, what I really want you to think about is, has there ever been a time where you wished you were stronger? Where you, did you wish you had the ability to lift something heavier or to, uh, to be stronger physically, mentally, emotionally, in any scenario? Was there ever a point where it's like, I wish I could have been stronger? If the answer is yes, then you need to strength train. No one ever complained about being too strong. They always, they complain about being too weak all the time. And if you, if you, even think for a moment that you might be too weak to do something, you need to fix that. You need to start lifting heavy weights in the gym. Um, let's see. One of my favorite quotes from Louis Simmons, who's an incredible mentor of mine and, and rest in peace. He, he died just about over a year ago now. Um, Louis Simmons would always say, you are only as strong as your weakest link. And so if we look at a chain, we have like a chain link, you can have super strong chains. But if one of those chains is weak, if one of those chains ha has a kink in it, if one of those chains could easily break, then the entire chain loses its purpose. The entire chain is now no longer strong because that one weak one broke it. And, and we could look at this from so many different perspectives, but let's just look at strength and cardio. If your cardio is super good, if your cardio is next level, is incredible, but you never strength train, you're a real fucking risk for so many different issues. I mean, we could look at a lot of the major issues that runners have or people who do a lot of cardiovascular sports but never strength train. Injury rate is through the roof. One of the easiest ways to prevent injury for someone who does a lot of cardio is to add strength training. It doesn't have to be seven days a week, doesn't have to be lifting, powerlifting heavy weights, but one of the simplest ways to prevent injury in a runner is strength training, which allows that runner to run more pain-free and injury-free which if that runner has a, a, a kink in the chain and that weakness is literally just being weak, they're not gonna be able to run. They're not gonna be able to do the thing they love most. So even if you love cardio and you hate strength training, doing a little bit of strength training is gonna allow you to do more cardio for longer over your life without getting injured. Okay, another big one. A lot of people, they say they, they just wanna get toned or defined, right? They just wanna get more toned or defined, which is great. I think it's a fantastic goal to have if that's what you would like. But in their mind, what they think they need to do in order to get more toned or defined is for whatever reason, they think they need to do more cardio or they think they need to do light weights for very high repetitions. And there are many different places that this, this myth has come from. And I'll say there's nothing wrong with light weights higher reps. There's nothing wrong with that. And that can be a part of a well-designed strength training program. But I think where this really came from is generally speaking, when you do lighter weights for higher reps, you feel your muscles burn more. Like you feel this burning sensation in your muscles. And then people think, oh my God, it's burning. So it's working. That's not how it works. Like it, it, it I can see why someone would think that, but just because your muscles are burning, doesn't mean you're actually doing anything to make it more defined or more toned. And, and this is a little bit nitpicky, but the only way to, to make a muscle more defined or more toned is to build a bigger muscle and make that muscle more visible. And when people hear that, they think, oh, but I don't wanna build a bigger muscle, even a little bit bigger, <laughs> like a little bit, like in order to grow a teeny tiny bit, that's how it's gonna be more defined. How do you actually, what does defined or toned mean? All it really means is that your muscle is more visible. The muscle tone or the, the muscle definition is more visible. So how do we get it more visible? You make it more visible by increasing the size slightly and then you lose your body fat. And that comes from, as we know, calorie fucking deficit, right? But 
if you're only doing a calorie deficit or you're only doing cardio and you're getting leaner and leaner and leaner, but you're not building muscle, then you're not gonna get toned or defined. So if you want a toned, defined look, strength training is a must. It's an absolute must. And actually, I'm gonna give you a, an example. A lot of people ask how much muscle can you actually build? People are worried about building too much muscle. Think about this. The most muscle, a natural, and by natural I mean someone who isn't taking steroids, the most muscle a natural male could build at any point in his life, and usually that's gonna be between like 18 to 22 years old, uh, is when he's just starting out strength training, he hasn't done it before, his testosterone levels are naturally as high as they possibly can be, he has like the best genetics of anybody else, like this elite individual, the most that he could build in one year is about 25 to 28 pounds of muscle at most in one year. And then every year thereafter, it about like it, it gets significantly, significantly less. And like you could even potentially say it would get about cuts in half every year. So year one, maybe he builds, we'll call it 30 pounds. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He builds 30 pounds in year one, which is insane. Next year, maybe he builds 15 pounds, right? So cool. So now he's up 45 pounds. The next year, maybe he builds like seven pounds. Right, so now he's up like about 50, 51 pounds or so, something like that. It's not that much. And most people are gonna build nowhere near that amount of muscle, like nowhere close, fractions of that. And for women, it's about a half of what he just built, half of that. So whatever, in his first year he built 30, take a woman about 18 to 20 years old, 15 pounds at, at most. And that's, if you're, if you're 60 years old or 50 years old or 40 years old, nowhere near that, probably closer to like, four to five, maybe six or seven pounds in that first year. And again, it gets cut in half thereafter every so on. So the worry or fear of building too much muscle and getting bulky instead of toned and defined, it's an unfounded fear. You're just not gonna do it. It's physiologically impossible unless you are taking anabolic steroids and or training like an elite athlete, like it's your fucking job. If you're, if you're recreationally strength training two to four times a week in the gym with like 80% consistency, you do not need to fucking worry about getting too big or building too much muscle. Now, if you want that tone to find look, you need to strength train so you can build a little bit bigger muscle. And then of course, if you want to really see that muscle, using a calorie deficit to get leaner so you can actually see what that muscle definition looks like. Now, this one I think is very interesting. I was talking with Mitch about this right before we, uh, we started filming. Actually, if you don't follow Mitch, you can do that right here. Mitch is my videographer. He's the fucking man, amazing guy, uh, incredible friend and uh, amazing videographer. If you're in the Dallas area, you wanna work with him, hit him up, he's incredible. Anyway, um, what a lot of people will talk about with strength training is increasing your metabolism. And it's true, strength training and building muscle is going to increase your metabolism. Why is that? Well, because when you, inc when, you, when you add more muscle mass to your body, you are adding more mass in general, and the more mass you have, the higher, your, higher your metabolism is gonna be. So a lot of fitness marketers and people who love strength training will really push this one and push this narrative, but if I'm being objective, we also have to be very honest and say, adding more muscle to your frame, number one, you can't really add that much like we just spoke about. It's, it's, it's far less than most people realize. And number two is, the amount your metabolism increases is far lower than most people actually think. People think, oh my God, if I had 10 pounds of muscle, I'm gonna be burning like thousands of calories extra. No, <laughs> that's not how it works. Uh, generally speaking, and the numbers will vary based on the source, but usually you'll find for every pound of muscle, you'll, you'll burn an extra about six calories. Some say a little bit more, some say about eight, some say a little bit less, about four. We're gonna take the average about six calories for every pound of muscle. So let's say you build 10 pounds of muscle, which is pretty fucking insane. You build 10 pounds of muscle, congratulations, you're burning an extra 60 calories per day. It's, it's really not that much. It's, it's less than a large apple, right? So it's not that much. But here's what's really important to remember. And this is something that I think goes massively overlooked. When people are saying building muscle increases your metabolism, what they're saying is adding that actual muscle, that muscle will burn inherently more calories, which it does, but it's not as much as we think. What people don't talk about though is, what does that mean for your life as a whole? When I think about someone who lifts weights on a consistent basis and who strength trains and has built a considerable amount of muscle, I don't think about someone who's just sitting down watching TV all day. Generally speaking, these tend to be more active people overall. I wonder why that is. Why do people who build muscle, why are they more active? Well, it probably is because it's they, what they prioritize 
they prioritize activity, but also because they're capable of doing it. They're capable of being more active. They have more energy. They have the ability to get up and move more. And this is part of your metabolism. This is called NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which takes up a huge percentage of how many calories you burn per day. So while building muscle does increase your metabolism baseline just by having a little bit of extra mass, it does do that. I think the greater benefit to your metabolism is what is going to happen to your everyday life, your everyday activities, they call it activities of daily living, ADLs. What's gonna happen is you're gonna move more. You're gonna be walking around more, you're gonna be more active just because you can, and not more active just like in this moment since you start strength training, but more active over a longer period of time. If you don't build this muscle and strength now, you're not gonna be able to be active sooner. By the time you hit 60, by the time you hit 65, by the time you hit 70, Fuck, by the time you hit 45, by the time you hit 50, you know, I'm only 31 years old, <coughs> excuse me, but I'm seeing a lot of my friends that I grew up with at 30, 35 years old becoming significantly less active now and more tired and stressed and all that, but they're less active in large part because they aren't strength training. They don't have the ability to be more active because they haven't built up their body's capacity to do it. So I don't care if you're 18, I don't care if you're 25, I don't care if you're 37, I don't care if you're 42, I don't care if you're 58, it doesn't matter to me. If you want to stay more active over the long term and have that net metabolic increase over the long term, you need to start strength training. Yes, cardio is amazing, but you also need to do strength training to do that. Now, another main benefit of strength training is massive, massive improvements in mobility and pain reduction, which I think a lot of people are very surprised to hear about, especially in terms of mobility. Because when people think of strength training, they go to bodybuilder, right? They go like lunkhead, immobile bodybuilder. That's not accurate, number one. I mean, we could put some things up of like Kai Green, for example, who's probably my favorite bodybuilder of all time. Juji Mufu, another amazing, amazing bodybuilder. Tons of muscle mass on these guys but they're insanely, insanely flexible. And why is that? Well, it's because when people think of the word muscle bound, they think just building muscle means that like you're really stiff and you can't do anything. No, the issue is one of the reasons that people who have a lot of muscle tend to be muscle bound or immobile is because they don't practice flexibility stuff. They don't train through full ranges of motion. Oftentimes they aren't deliberately improving their flexibility. It's not that building muscle prevents you from being flexible, it's that if you spend all of your time only doing one thing, then you'll lose other qualities along the way. Same thing where if you're only doing cardio, then you're going to lose strength qualities and muscle qualities. If you're only doing super heavy strength training but also not focusing on improving your mobility, it's gonna be a big fucking problem, which is why we need both. We need a balanced approach, not just one over the other. But we look at guys like Kai Green or Juji Mufu who are super, super flexible, not only do they add mobility training like that maybe more traditional yoga stuff like that, but they also use strength training as a way of mobility training, using maybe a little bit lighter loads and using those loads through a full range of motion. I mean, doing a good straight leg deadlift is probably one of the best hamstring stretches you'll ever do in your life. Doing a good Romanian deadlift is another amazing hamstring stretch. Doing th these things through a full range of motion with a little bit lighter load is still strength training, but allows you to continue to improve your mobility along the way. Doing a really good uh, a lat pull down, for example, with a big stretch at the top is going to elongate your lats, which a lot of people, they get really tight, stiff lats, which is gonna impede their shoulder mobility. But if you're doing really good lat pull downs coming all the way up, allowing for a full range of motion with a big stretch, what, what, it, what are we doing? We're fucking stretching under load, which gets the benefits of strength training and the benefits of stretching. And there's a ton of research showing that stretching under load is often more beneficial than stretching without load. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't stretch with just your body weight. It's a wonderful thing to do. I love doing yoga poses and I think it's a really important part of a well-designed strength training program, which is why in the inner circle, I'll usually superset a strength move with a yoga-based move or a mobility-based move. But doing strength training properly will also allow you to improve your mobility. And as a result of that, improving your mobility, also decreasing your risk of injury. One of the biggest reasons we'll see people getting injured is because they have a lack of mobility. Now, if you can increase your strength and your mobility at the same time, your risk of injury becomes infinitely lower. It's remarkable. And what's so cool about this is like, it's not like you need to have a mobility session and a strength session and a cardio session 
you can do them all in one. There are ways to incorporate them all into the same thing. Because now when people start to think, oh my God, so I have to have my cardio session, and then my strength session, and then my mobility session, and then this session, and that session, there are ways to do everything at once in a very coordinated, very deliberate fashion. So it's not like you need to be working out for 82 hours a week. It's figuring out how to get the best of all the world into a consolidated program that is gonna help you the most, which is why I have my inner circle, but I'll talk, talk about that later. So another major benefit of strength training is, and I'm using the example of running here, but this goes for all cardiovascular activity, but I'm gonna use running as the main example here. If you are stronger, you're going to be able to not only run faster, but also for longer. And when I say longer, it doesn't just mean in an individual run, it means for the rest of your life. And I spoke about that earlier, but let's just briefly talk about running faster. If we look, let's just take a look at the best sprinters in the world. Google search, best sprinters in the world, and then image search it. You're going to see fucking jacked individuals, men and women, huge glutes, big quads, big arms. Why are these sprinters so jacked? Why, are, why do they have so much muscle? And remember, it's, don't get scared because you see them. These are elite athletes. These are Olympic athletes that you're seeing on Google Images. Why are they so jacked? Well, number one is because they're elite athletes and they need that for their sport. They're also genetically superior from an athletic and muscle building perspective. Potentially, they've used performance enhancing drugs, but also because they're strength training. And what here, if we think about the equation uh, for force, force equals mass times acceleration, right? So if you want to get stronger, if you want to get faster, excuse me, well, you need to be able to increase how much force you can produce. When you think about, when you're thinking about running, when you put force into the ground, the ground is putting force back into you. And if you can't produce a lot of force, then the ground isn't gonna be able to put force back into you and propel you faster. The fastest runners ever produce a mega fuck ton of force because every time they put force into the ground, the ground is putting force back into them, which allows them to propel them faster and faster and faster and faster. You will never see a weak sprinter, ever. You will never see someone who sprints and, and is weak. And as for longer distance runners, maybe you're running 5K, 10K, maybe you're doing a marathon, doesn't matter. Even a marathon runner has to sprint to the finish line. Louis Simmons, that one of my favorite quotes from him forever. Maybe you prefer doing longer, slower duration runs, whatever it is, but at some point in time, you're gonna need to sprint. And having that strength in order to sprint more quickly is gonna benefit you in your, in your actual run if you're a competitive runner. Not to mention, like I spoke about earlier, the strength training benefits that come with injury prevention if you want to continue running for the rest of your life. Now, one of the things we hear in terms of the benefits of strength training is increasing bone density. And I always hesitate to bring this one up because quite frankly, it just sounds so boring. People hear, oh, increased bone density, and they think of like an 87 year old woman who falls and breaks her hip, and they think it's not relevant to them. Um, it's 100% relevant to you. It could not be more relevant to you. I'm assuming you want to live to be older. I'm assuming you don't want to die by 50. I'm assuming you want to live an, a long, healthy life. And if we look at one of the leading causes of death among older people, not just an 87-year-old woman, but 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever. And 60s is not old, by the way. 70s is not old. It's getting to a point where I don't even think 80s is old, to be very honest with you. I really only start to think someone is old by the time they're in their 90s. And maybe that's going to change. But if you want to live a long, healthy life, if we look at the, the rate of death among people as they get older, like what's causing death? Falling is one of the biggest ones. Anyone who's worked in a physical therapy clinic will tell you this. Anyone who's worked in a hospital will tell you this. It's, it's fucking petrifying to think like, I could not imagine one of, a, a, a more, I could imagine some more terrible ways, but this is among the worth, worst ways to die. Could you imagine being home alone in your house or maybe even, who knows, with your partner who's also very old and like one of you falls? and you're not able to get up and you break your hip or you break a bone, you're not able to get up, you're not able to get help, the other person you're with isn't strong enough to be able to help pick you up to help fi figure out a way to get help and you die there alone in your living room after falling down the stairs or maybe you fell off getting off the toilet, whatever it is, maybe you're not strong enough to get off the toilet and like these are real issues and it's, it's difficult for me to even talk about but this is how people die. Some people die just because they fell, they broke something, and then a terrible cascade of events, and they, they end up 
they end up dying as a result of it. And even if you do have the ability to call and get help, there many people die because once their body goes through that stress of breaking a hip, breaking a femur, whatever it is, their body starts to shut down. Like that was the catalyst that just, it broke the camel's back and from the point that they broke their hip or whatever it is, their body starts to shut down and that's when they die. And it's just, it's terrible. And I think it's so easy to think, oh, that's not gonna be me, that's not gonna be me, be me that's not gonna be me, until it is. Or it's someone that you know, maybe it's a loved one, which is the person you need to send this video to right now. But strength training, adding bone, adding bone density is one of the most important things that you can do to help you live a longer, healthier life. Please, for the love of God, like I, I want this one to be the biggest one. I care more about this than, than increasing your metabolism. I care more about this than actually just being able to lift heavier weights. I care more about this than being able to open the pickle jar. This one is, is so important because everybody overlooks it. Nobody thinks they're gonna be the one that falls down. Nobody thinks that they're gonna be the one that breaks their hip. And it's just devastating, devastating for you and your family. And it's, I'm not gonna say it's easily preventable, but it's definitely preventable, absolutely. And you can reduce your risk tremendously just by strength training a couple times a week. Now, this one I'm very excited about. This is gonna be the last benefit of strength training before I get into some fundamentals that you can include if you're new to strength training or have never done it before. But getting stronger is one of the best things you can do for self-defense and protecting yourself, even if you don't practice a martial art. And again, if you followed me for a while, you know I've, I wrestled since I was a kid, I do jujitsu, I've done boxing. Like I'm a huge fan of martial arts and self-defense and self -defense and learning to protect yourself and protect your family. But even if you don't do that, there was actually recently a video that Henner Gracie posted. We'll see if we can put up a little clip of it right here. It was a very, very scary video of a super kind woman who opened the door of a gym to let someone who she thought had just forgot their key, but this guy then tried to rape her in the gym. She was all alone in there, and this guy tried to rape her, and it didn't look like this woman had any self-defense or martial arts experience. But what she did in this video is, number one, she didn't give up. She fucking fought and fought and fought until the guy just gave up. He just like, he couldn't do anything. But again, like she's in a gym and she was strength training. She was lifting weights. And one of the reasons she was able to continue fighting and not give up is because she had the strength. And I guarantee you that when this guy started to, to try and grab this woman and he felt that she was strong and that she wasn't giving up, that fucked with him mentally. And he was like, this isn't gonna be as easy as I thought. All he saw was a woman alone in a gym and he didn't think that she would have the strength to really fight. And thank God she not only had the physical strength but the mental strength as well to just keep going. Being strong, lifting weights, getting stronger in the gym, it will not only increase your physical capability but your mental capability. It will increase your mental confidence in yourself to keep fucking fighting. I think a lot of people, when they think about self-defense situations, they think, okay, I need to figure out how I can, how I can uh, eliminate the threat. How can I submit them? How can I choke them out? How can I break a bone? The reality is most self-defense situations, the best thing you can do is run away. Don't even get involved in the confrontation. But in a situation like this, where this woman is fighting and fighting and fighting, like her goal, her, her job wasn't to, to choke the guy out because she didn't have that training. Her job wasn't to break his arm. Her job was to fight and fight and fight until he gave up, until he couldn't do it anymore, which is exactly what happened. And thank God, she got away. She, she was not, it didn't go until the, the worst case scenario. It was still a terrible scenario and situation, but she got out alive and she got out relatively unharmed because she didn't fucking stop. And if she didn't strength train, I don't think that would've been able to happen. If she wasn't strong physically and mentally, I don't think she would've been able to make it out of that situation relatively unharmed. So I'm obviously always gonna be pushing for people to do mixed martial arts or to do, to do jujitsu or to do Muay Thai boxing or to do something that will help them in these situations. But even if you don't, strength training is at the very least one of the most important things you can do because i'll tell you like i've been fighting people since i was eight years old whether it was wrestling or jujitsu or boxing whatever it is there are very few things that are more intimidating than when you shake someone's hand right before you're about to fight and you feel oh shit like they've got a strong grip like there are very few things that like are are more scary right before you're about to fight someone and if you've got that grip strength you've got so you you got strong muscles and someone tries to hurt you and you put your hands on them and they feel immediately like oh shit this person's got strength that immediately 
fucks with them mentally and emotionally. It immediately makes them question their ability to actually do something bad to you. It immediately puts them on the defensive. And let me tell you, as someone who's been fighting for a while, I'm by no means a professional fighter, nowhere close, and I get my ass kicked every day, but I have a, a decent amount of experience. The mental side of fighting is, is the most important part. As soon as you make your opponent think that they might not be capable of actually beating you, you've already won. They've lost it. The moment that they start to question it, they've lost and you've won. And building up the strength, physical and mental strength to keep fighting and to keep someone at bay could help keep you safe. It could keep your family safe, your loved ones safe, your friends safe, your colleagues safe. It is unbelievably important. And so please, if nothing else, start strength training just so you can build up that strength to scare the shit out of someone if God forbid you need it. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some very basic but fundamental strength training guidelines for someone who is brand new to strength training. Maybe you've never strength trained before, maybe you've only been doing cardio, whatever it is. I wanna give you some very basic, very fundamental, very effective strategies to help you understand what a great strength training program looks like and how you can start today, right now. So, and actually before I begin, again, one more time, if you know someone who needs this video, who's someone who has not been strength training yet, husband, wife, daughter, son, uncle, aunt, colleague, coworker, uh, whatever, the person you pass every day on the fucking street, I don't care, please send them this video. Like we need more people strength training. So um, for the, the first guideline, let's just talk about how many days per week. Generally speaking, two days per week, three days per week or four days per week is in my opinion optimal. You don't need to be training six, seven days a week or even five days a week. One day a week is definitely better than nothing and you can absolutely see results with one day a week, especially early on. But between two to four, in my opinion, is where you, you have the sweet spot. And realistically, in terms of optimal, I think three to four days is best. Three to four days per week of strength training is best, but I have a lot of clients and inner circle members who only do two and they see tremendous results. Generally speaking, the people who strength train two days per week, oftentimes they just fucking don't like strength training at all. It's not really fun for them, but they know they need to do it for all of the reasons we just previously mentioned. So they do it two days per week and they get, they get plenty of benefits from it. But between three to four, in my opinion, tends to be where the sweet spot is, where you get the fastest results over the shortest period of time. And, and training two days per week or one day per week, you still get great results, but it just takes a little bit longer. And there's nothing wrong with it taking longer, at least you're doing it. But three to four days per week, you get the, uh, the results at the fastest rate possible without overstressing your body. Once you get into five, six, seven days a week, it's very difficult to recover properly. It's an insane time investment. And quite frankly, you just don't need to train that much. Uh, really, I think, some of the only people who should be strength training five, six, seven days a week are people who are taking anabolic steroids. And a lot of people hear about steroids and they think the, the, only, the, uh, the only thing that steroids do is they just help you build muscle more quickly and strength more easily. And they do help with that, but I think the more important part of them is they actually help you recover more quickly. Taking anabolic steroids, depending on which ones you're taking, actually allows your muscles and your tendons and your joints and your ligaments to recover more quickly so that you can actually train harder. You can train seven days a week, two times a day if you're taking these things in certain quantities and you're managing your training well because you can recover more quickly than someone who's natural and not taking these substances. So two, three, or four days per week is in my opinion, the best. Now, um, in terms of time frame, the, actually the only reason I'm including this is just because someone asked me this today, like how long should my workouts be? Um, it's sort of an arbitrary question, not fully arbitrary, but it's not as big of a deal because what matters most is that the training is effective, not necessarily how much time it takes. There are ways to strength train, so a method called grease the groove, where instead of actually going to the gym and spending an hour there, you just do it sort of sporadically throughout the day, whether it's with push-ups or chin-ups or squats, whatever it is, just around your house, there are ways to set up this grease the groove method that was popularized by Pavel Tsatsouline that allows you to just consistently strength train throughout the day. And you would literally just do it, it Maybe like every time you walk into the kitchen, you do five push-ups, something like that. That's a, an example of greasing the groove. But in this example and in this video, I'm just talking about actual strength training sessions, two, three, or four times per week. Generally speaking, anywhere between like 30 to 45 minutes is, is a really good uh, goal, especially for someone who's just starting out. As you get more advanced and as you're lifting heavier weight and as your program progresses, going up to 60 to 75 minutes, is often going to happen because you'll need a little bit more of a greater stimulus in order to progressively overload, which can take just a little bit more time. But if you're brand new and you've never done it before, 
30 to 45 minutes, two to four days per week is absolutely plenty. You don't need more than that. Um, another fundamental principle that I think is really important is rest periods. The minimum rest periods that I want you to take in between strength exercises, minimum is 90 seconds, which is a minimum of a minute and a half rest periods in between every strength, strength exercise. So let's say you're doing, I don't know, dumbbell bench press, just off the top of my head. You do one set and then you would rest, you put your fucking clock on for at least 90 seconds. Now, depending on the exercise, and this is getting a little more advanced, depending on the exercise, depending how much you're lifting, depending how advanced you are, depending on what your goals are, there's a time and a place for resting up to five minutes between sets. That is very real, it is very common, it's not bad. In fact, longer rest periods have been shown to help more with strength and muscle growth. So one of the reasons a lot of people will do very short rest periods is because they wanna get their heart rate up, they wanna be sweating, they wanna feel like they're doing stuff. That's more of a cardio-based workout. And then again, it's important and there's a time and a place for it. But when your goal is strength, longer rest periods are king. Longer rest periods win. They, they help you because they allow your muscles to fully recover in between sets so you can produce more force that will allow you to generate more force and lead to greater strength and muscle gains in the long run. So I'm giving you a minimum of 90 seconds because I know there are gonna be some people who have a struggle, they struggle with that. But if you go up to two minutes, two and a half minutes, three minutes between sets, cool. No problem at all. Once you pass five minutes, it's a little bit too much. You don't need to be resting for five minutes in between every set or more, but anywhere between 90 seconds to three minutes rest in between your sets is really, really good and a great range to shoot for. Um, now, the next fundamental here is the majority of your, of your exercises should be full body compound movements. And what I mean by that is, uh, generally speaking, there are two different types of movements. You have full body compound movements that are basically just uh, multi-joint exercises. So squats, right? Squats, you're, you're moving through your ankles, through your knees, through your hips. This is a multi-joint exercise and you're using a lot of muscle. You're using your hamstrings, you're using your quads, you're using your glutes, you're using erect, your erectors, you're using a lot of muscles in your back. This is a big compound movement. We could look at lat pulldowns or chin-ups, for example, or rows. These are movements for your back. You're, you're moving through your elbow, through your shoulder. You're training big, big muscle groups. The other type of movement is an isolation exercise. And this is where you focus on one muscle at a time. So an isolation exercise is like a bicep curl or a shoulder lateral raise or a tricep extension where you're just focusing on one muscle group at a time. And there's nothing wrong with these exercises. I include them in all of my inner circle programs, including the beginner ones. But in the beginner ones, the priority is always focused on the big compound movements. And not just in the beginner, also in the intermediate and advanced. Regardless of, of how advanced you are or aren't, when it comes to strength training, the majority of your exercises should be big compound movements, squats, deadlifts, bench press, chin-ups, uh, pull-ups, dumbbell rows, lat pull-downs, big compound movements that recruit the most amount of muscle. They're gonna have the biggest bang for your buck. They're gonna lead to the biggest strength and muscle gains over the long term. And, and then once you get to the end of the workout, adding in a couple of isolation exercises if you want to, but they're not essential. But the majority of what you should of you should be doing in the gym should be big compound exercises. Another very important fundamental aspect of strength training is how many exercises you should be doing per day. And what's really cool is there's a lot of variety, there's a lot of uh, variation here depending on on you as the individual. But generally speaking, three to five exercises is good. You don't need to do more. So, uh, for example, like one of my uh, one of my um, personal days that I've been doing lately for jujitsu, I have an upper body pull day, and this is getting a little bit more advanced. But it's basically all exercises on this day are for my my upper back and my arms, right? So I'll do I'll do one exercise. I'll do a seated cable row, right? Change my upper back. It's a big compound movement. I'll do three sets of that. Then I move on and I'll do uh, some type of a, of a vertical pull. This Lately it's been doing chin-ups or pull-ups, right? So I do a horizontal row, then I do a vertical row, which is a chin-up or a pull-up. I'll do three sets of that. And then I'll go from there and I'll usually do something that, for my back, but honestly a little bit more for shoulder health, something like a face pull or, uh, or some external rotation work or band pull-up parts. And then from there, then I'll do something for my arms. Maybe it's a bicep curl, uh, whether it's a, an easy bar curl, dumbbell curl, barbell curl, band curls, rope curls, whatever it is. But it's like three to four exercises and I'm done in about 35 minutes and that's it. It's super effective. And what's great about it is I've seen that transfer so much over to my main goal, which is jujitsu. 
like especially whether it's when I'm choking people out or I'm pulling people into me really, really quickly, they feel the strength. They feel it. And it's so cool because again, a lot of people think that in order to get stronger and when you're lifting weights, you need to be tired. You need to be drenched in sweat. Your heartbeat needs to be going crazy. No, effective strength training is, is very simple, very basic. Usually I'm not really sweating at the end of a strength workout. I'm not really exhausted. My muscles are a little bit fatigued, but I'm not breathing like this. I'm not drenched in sweat like I would be usually from a cardio workout. It's a different energy system. And so you don't need a lot of exercises. Three to five exercises per day is absolutely plenty, especially if you're a beginner. Um, and then from there, generally between two to four sets of six to 12 reps per exercise. I wanna talk about this for a second. Two to four sets, if you wanna go two, that's great. If you wanna do four, that's great. I generally just stick to three, um, just because that's the average of both of them. If it's an exercise that I really hate and I don't like doing, but I know I need to do it, I'll usually do two sets, just because I hate it and I know I need to do it, but I know I'm still getting an effective number of reps in there with simply two sets. If it's an exercise I love and I really wanna keep doing it and like it's something that I enjoy, then I'll do four sets. I'll keep it at four, like just get one extra set in because I wanna have fun with it and I wanna practice the skill of it. If it's an exercise that really drains me, like a very, very heavy deadlift that like just fatigues me, not just muscularly, but my central nervous system, my brain, I'll often only do two sets just because it's super heavy and I don't need to keep training that into three or four set range. But anywhere between two to four sets is good. And for six to 12 reps, a lot of people, especially when they first start strength training, they're like, that's not enough. I need to be doing 15, 20, 30, as many reps as I can. That is stupid. That's, that's not strength. You are now training a different energy system, a different strength quality. Once you get above 12 reps, there's a time and a place for those number of reps, but it's really no longer strength training. It's more strength endurance training, and then just leading to straight endurance once you get to 20 plus. Um, so when you're in that six to 12 range, it's really good because you can get very, very strong. You are forcing yourself to lift heavier weights for those number of repetitions. And it, it's going to allow you to make the changes you want in your muscles, whether it's more defined, uh, stronger, more powerful, more explosive. Um, if you're doing too many repetitions, you're not training strength qualities anymore, which is why we wanna keep that lower-ish range of six to 12. That's probably gonna be the most beneficial for you over the long run from a strength perspective. And the last thing that I'm gonna talk about, I actually spoke about this a lot in my last, or not, this is my last video. Uh, the last video that was published was the progressive overload video. And if you haven't seen that yet, how to use progressive overload to get stronger and get the most out of your strength training, I'll put the link for that in the description of this video. But you need to follow a fucking program. The acronym for this is FAFP, F-A-F-P, follow a fucking program. This is probably the most important thing you can do when it comes to strength training, because one of the biggest issues people have is when they don't know what to do, despite the guidelines I just gave you, I mean, there's still probably a lot you don't know. I mean, this is what I've been studying since I was 14. I went to school for it, even though I didn't really learn a lot in school, to be honest. Um, I learned way more through internships and actually coaching real people and reading books and, and scientific journals on this stuff. But there's a lot of time and effort that I've spent studying this, so for me, it's relatively easy to rattle that off and understand the nuance, but if you don't feel like you fully understand how to create a program, which exercises to do, the technique for those exercises so you can stay safe and use the right muscles, it can be difficult, so follow a program. Either hire a coach, or I don't care, get a free program online, or join my inner circle. And obviously I'm gonna hope that you join my inner circle, at least give it a shot because I think it's pretty fucking good. I give you a new program every single month. I give you a three times a week program and a four times a week program, just like I said, because I think those are optimal. You can make them one or two day a week programs if you'd prefer, but every month I give you a brand new program. Every single exercise has an in-depth video tutorial explaining how to do the exercise, the most common mistakes with that exercise, and how to make sure you're using your muscles properly without getting injured. Got a rest timer in there, so it tells you how much rest you should be taking for each exercise. And once the exercise is over, you hit a button, boom, the rest timer pops up, and it will be there to tell you you need to keep resting or hey, it's time to get back to the workout. Basically, in the inner circle, I break down everything for you that you need to know so that you don't have to think. You just follow the program. If you are a coach and, and you want to learn the science of this stuff, then like that's one thing. But if you are not a coach and you're just an everyday fitness enthusiast and you just want someone to tell you what to do, I can be your personal trainer in your pocket. You join the inner circle, 
link in the description. You immediately get access to the app, whether you, you want the app version or the website version, it's all there. And I will tell you exactly what to do and you get a brand new strength program every single month. Also give you cardio guidelines, also give you mobility and flexibility guidelines, give you nutrition guidelines, basically take care of everything you need in order to be successful with your health and fitness. But if you're not sure what strength, tra strength training program to follow or how to create a strength training program or how to do the exercises, let me teach you, let me do that for you. Click the link in the description, join the inner circle. I would love to have you. And with all of that said, I think we just covered why cardio is not enough and you need to do strength training as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you don't already, leave a comment if you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. And the video is not over yet, still got to do Q and A and also announce the free winners of the inner circle. So uh, what we do every single video is pick three people who commented on the previous video. You have to subscribe to the channel and like the video, but if you leave a comment and also subscribe and like the video, you are immediately entered to win a free month in the inner circle and we pick three people every single video to get those. So I'm going to announce those winners right now, then we're gonna get into the Q&A. So the three people who won a free month in the inner circle, people who commented on the last video are Dina Gamer, Salment16, and Lola93. So congratulations to each and every one of you. I left you instructions under your comment telling you how to get your free month in the inner circle. So thank you so much. And again, if you'd like to win a free month in the inner circle, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment. I do this every single video, so leave a comment. Maybe you don't get picked this time, maybe not next time, but eventually you very well might get picked. So congratulations to the winners. Now let's get some Instagram questions answered. Okay, so we're gonna answer three questions this time. Usually we only do two, but we're gonna do a bonus question today. So watch to the end. The first question is from Patches Many Ones, and they asked, does it matter how fast I walk? I feel like I need to be speed walking. It's a very good question, and I'll start by saying this. I have an entire video on the 10,000 step rule and, and everything you need to know about how many steps you need to take per day in order to get the health benefits of it. And I actually also talk about how fast you do need to walk. But let's start with this. The answer is it doesn't fucking matter how fast you walk. This is a classic example of people massively overthinking this shit. It doesn't matter how fast you walk from a health perspective. It doesn't matter if you're speed walking, right? Get those nice little speed walking shorts and you're doing this shit, or if you're walking and strolling with your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your kids or just by yourself out listening to a podcast and you're just out for a stroll on the beach, on the pavement, doesn't fucking matter. Just go walk. Please, and anytime, if you're following someone who's like, you need to be walking at a speed of 3.7 miles per hour for this much time, shut the fuck up, unfollow them immediately. This is the shit that stresses us out, that actually makes this stuff not even healthy for us anymore because you're so stressed about it that your cortisol is spiked and it's just, it's ruining it. Go out for a walk. If you like to speed walk, speed walk. If you like this thing, it's, it's, it's actually pretty fucking crazy how fast they can walk without running. Uh, if you like leisurely walking like I do, then go on a leisurely walk. My wife, daughter, and I, we go for a leisurely walk many days of the week, at least one day a week. Every Saturday and Sunday, we try and go for a walk. Uh, and we're just hanging out. We'll stop, get some coffee, go around, get a little alcoholic drink, hang out, and then go for a walk. Just relax, go on a walk. It doesn't matter how fast you fucking go. Just do what you feel comfortable with. Okay, the next question is from Sarah Wilson 6 and this is a phenomenal question. I'm gonna go into depth on this one. Sarah asked, I love avocados, but they have so many calories. Is there such a thing as good calories? Let's break this down. I love avocado as well. First, let's talk about, is there such a thing as good calories and bad calories? First and foremost, no, there's not. It's horse shit, I'm gonna explain why. Let's talk about calories. What is a calorie? Anytime someone tells me, well, that's a good calorie and that's a bad calorie, I always ask, well, would you mind telling me what a calorie is? If someone has the audacity to say there's a good calorie and a bad calorie, then they better be able to fucking define what a calorie is. And if you Google search the definition of a calorie, it is simply a unit of measurement. All a calorie is, is how much energy you're putting in your body. That's it. It says nothing about the quality of the food. It says nothing about the macronutrients, the micronutrients, how, what you're giving to your body, other than how much total energy is being put into your body. That's it. In the same way a mile is a unit of measurement, a mile tells you how long you've traveled, it doesn't matter if the mile is on pavement 
or if the mile is on sand, or if the mile is going uphill, or if the mile is going downhill, a mile is always a mile. Now, running a mile downhill would probably take less time than running a mile uphill. It would probably take you longer to run a mile on sand than it would to run a mile on pavement. But it doesn't change the fact that you're still running a mile. The distance, the total distance, the measurement is the same. The composition of that mile, the sand, the pavement, uphill, downhill, forest, whatever, the composition changes how long it will take you to run that mile. The composition changes how it's going to affect your tendons, your joints, your ligaments, your muscles, all of that. The composition changes the effect that it's going to have on your muscle soreness, right? So maybe running downhill will make you more sore than running uphill because the greater eccentric stress, blah, 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 blah. Either way, a mile is always a mile regardless of the composition of that mile. Now we can go back to calories. Right? So you have a donut and you have an apple. Right, 100 calories from the donut is equivalent to 100 calories from the apple because by definition, the calorie is just the unit of measurement. Now, 100 calories from a donut might just be a small bite, whereas 100 calories from an apple might be the whole fucking apple. So you're gonna get more full from 100 calories from that apple than you would from 100 calories from a donut. The apple's gonna have more vitamins, more minerals, a more nutritional benefit to you than the donut, right? So the composition of these foods changes. The macronutrients, the micronutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, all of that. But it doesn't change the fact that 100 calories from an apple and 100 calories from a donut are equivalent because all calories are created equal and a calorie is just a calorie regardless of the source. It's just telling you how much energy is in that food. Now, as for avocados, unfortunately, they do ha have a lot of calories, which sucks because I could eat so much avocado. It's fucking amazing. Mitch behind the camera, we literally just had avocado toast right before we came down here because my wife made an amazing avocado toast. It's delicious. And unfortunately, it does have a lot of calories but also it has incredible, incredible health benefits for you, right? So, I mean, it is packed with antioxidants. It helps reduce your cholesterol. It helps improve your heart health. It has amazing high quality fats. It's fucking packed with fiber. It's tremendous. Avocados are one of the best things that you can include in your nutrition on a very regular basis. The unfortunate reality is though, you just have to be aware of how much you're having. If you're having six avocados a day, well, that's a lot of calories. It's a lot of fat. And even though there are so many health benefits to it, eating too many calories is eating too many calories regardless of where they came from. So avocados are incredibly healthy for you. They're an amazing food. And unfortunately, they're very calorie dense. So all that means is you just have to be aware of how much you're eating. You should still incorporate it in your nutrition if you enjoy eating it, which I couldn't imagine anybody not liking avocado because it's fucking delicious and so versatile. But unfortunately, it does have a lot of calories. So just be aware of how much you're eating. Now, the last question is from Dick Jones Jr.'s and he asked, is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu good cardio? And I wanted to answer this question, number one, because I'm obsessed with Jiu Jitsu. As you know, literally every video starts off with me doing Jiu Jitsu because I do Jiu Jitsu at least five days a week. Um, but it's also very relevant to the discussion of this video, which is saying like, hey, cardio is not enough. You also need to do strength. Um, Jiu Jitsu is one of these very unique sports and very unique activities, which encompasses both strength and cardio. Now, from a strength perspective, it's not all encompassing and it's not comprehensive because you need to tra train through a variety of different movement patterns and load yourself in a variety of different ways through comprehensive strength training to get the best benefits, needing to train through a full range of motion and all of that. But because of the way that jujitsu is structured, because of the, the, the nature of the sport, similar to wrestling, when there, there's isometric contraction, strong isometric contraction, strong pulling, there is some significant pushing as well. Uh, there's isometric contractions with your hamstrings, with your adductors, with your grip strength. There's so much strength involved that it actually can improve your strength and muscle mass and bone density pretty considerably. It's not a comprehensive strength program. I think you should still do strength training outside of it, but strength training, or jujitsu, excuse me, can still improve your strength. On the other hand, when I tell you this, I don't take this lightly. Jiu-Jitsu is without question the single best cardiovascular workout I have ever done in my entire life. There is nothing, whether it's running, whether it's cycling, whether it's wrestling, whether it's hiking, whether it's rucking, I don't care what the fuck it is. There is nothing I have ever done in my life. I've been an athlete my whole life. God bless. Like, thank God for everything that I've been given and that the, I have the ability to do this. 
There is no activity I've ever done in my entire life that has been more cardiovascularly demanding than jujitsu. So if you want to improve your cardio, if you want to improve your heart health, if you want to improve your ability to defend yourself, if you want to get stronger, I think jujitsu is just the ultimate. It does everything at once and it's an amazing, amazing cardio workout. Another cool thing about it is you can sort of self-regulate what aspect of cardio you're doing with jujitsu. So if you really want to work on some higher intensity cardio, then you can train with someone more intensely. You just roll harder. Uh, in jujitsu, when we're talking about fighting, they call it rolling. There's no punching or kicking or elbowing or headbutting or biting or any of that. It's, it's, it's grappling. So you're wrestling with them and trying to submit them. So you can say to your partner, hey, let's roll really hard. And what's cool about that is like with boxing, for example, if you fight really hard, you can't punch someone softly. Right? It's like you're hitting them hard or you're not. In jiu-jitsu, you're not hitting them. You're grappling with them. You're rolling with them. So you can go as hard as you want and the risk of injury is relatively low. Like you're, it's, The risk of injury in jiu-jitsu, I've found, is about the same as risk of injury with strength training. Maybe slightly higher if I'm being objective about it. But still very, very, very low. Actually, Mitch, you've seen me do jiu-jitsu so many, for so many months now. Have you ever seen me get injured with jiu-jitsu? No. Never. Like I've never, over the last, like, 10 months, I've never been injured with jujitsu. No, you're like a rubber band, you just pop right back. Yeah, right back. So the, the thing with jujitsu is, yes, like, like with everything, walking down the street, there's a risk of injury, but I think the, the benefits of it far outweigh any risk, and as, compared to other martial arts, the risk of injury is unbelievably low. So you get amazing cardio from it. Oh, and then going back to sort of, you can auto-regulate, if you wanna get really high intense, maybe zone four, zone five cardio, you just roll harder, you, you do a more intense workout. But let's say you just want to get a little bit lower intensity cardio, just get a little bit of sweat going, maybe some zone two, then you just drill. You practice the movements over and over and over again. Maybe you're practicing an arm bar, you're practicing a triangle choke, you're practicing some takedowns, you're practicing moving, passing guards, sweeping, whatever it is, but your flow rolling is what they call it. You, you and your partner are going lightly together, you're giving each other opportunities to train and to try things, and your heart rate isn't going to go as high, and you can do that for a longer period of time, 20, 30, 40, 60 minutes without it really negatively affecting you or taxing you. And that is another amazing form of cardio that will also allow you the opportunity to develop the skill of jujitsu. So I'm a huge proponent of jujitsu. I actually might have something coming out in the near future, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, for jujitsu athletes or people who want to do jujitsu. Specifically, I'm, I'm trying to come up with something for uh, the strength and conditioning component of that to help reduce your risk of injury, improve your performance, blah, 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 blah. So keep an eye out on that. But to answer the question, yes, jujitsu is amazing cardio and I couldn't recommend it enough. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you leave a comment if you want to be entered to win a free month in the inner circle. Have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you soon.